All right, we're gonna make a little uh, video this morning of assembling these uh, cylinder heads. Had some uh, questions on what to use on the uh, valve stems when you put heads together. We talked about grease is not a good idea. There's not a lot of clearance in between the uh, guide and the valve stem. So when you put grease on this and you stick it in there, it makes it really hard for any kind of lubricant to get in through the top of the guide up here. And what happens is the grease ends up getting in there and it bakes. And you can see on these valve stems, the wear that we have. So this motor only has 2,000 miles on it. And uh, I would contribute the uh, valve stem wear to the assembly process last time. So if you have a set of cylinder heads or even if you buy a brand new set of cylinder heads, Never just bolt them on your car, unless you're buying heads from like Steve Timms or Clyde Berg or one of the, you know, Fumia, one of those guys out there that makes really nice cylinder heads. But at that price point, you probably want to take them apart and look at them anyway. But if you're buying an off-the-shelf head, you definitely want to take it apart, get you some valve lapping compound, and lap the valve into the seat. And you want to establish a, a sealing pattern. You'll see this little gray area around the top of the valve there. That's where our seat's at. So you want to try to get the seat towards the top if you can when you do the valve job. You guys probably aren't going to be doing a valve job and the heads you buy are already going to be valve job. But you definitely want to lap them in and make sure you establish a seat. These heads were not lapped in. They were probably just put on the car and they had two bad exhaust seats that caused this motor to run really bad and damage some parts in just 2,000 miles. So it doesn't cost anything to take your heads apart and do these couple steps. It's very cheap. Uh, you can lubricate the stems. The other thing you want to check for, this setup here is a CV Performance head. It's 044. This is their style valve. It's got a single groove in it instead of the three grooves from the factory. I don't have a factory valve laying around, but you want to make sure that when you have your keepers, these are your locks or keepers. This is your valve spring, and this is your valve retainer. Now, when you put your locks on your uh, valve stem, I'm going to place the locks on here. Like I said, these are an aftermarket part, so they've already made the provisions. You wanna make sure your keepers are not touching, especially if you're using a Volkswagen style keeper, a lot of times they'll, what I mean by touching, instead of having a space in between them, that lets us know that the groove on the keeper is positively locked into the groove on the stem. Now if we put these together like so, this is what you don't want to see. You don't want them to butt together. You want to make sure there's a little space in between them. And a lot of times on a Volkswagen Keeper, you'll have to take it over to the grinding wheel or to a belt sander and take a little bit off each Keeper until you have a little space in between them. If you don't do this, when you go to take your heads apart, a lot of times you'll see the Keepers beat up. They won't come back through the guides and uh, they can cause issues. So you always want to make sure you have that space so you have a positive lock. I have everything laid out here. We're going to use uh, single springs. So we're not going to talk about installed height or any of that because this is already set up. Installed height is controlled by the retainer, how the spring sits in it. And then you can put a shim underneath the spring or you can machine the valve spring pocket to lower the spring in the head if you're using a, a tall spring. Like I said, these are already set up. Uh, the, the stalled height seem okay. The spring pressure wasn't a problem. So we're gonna uh, put everything back together. We valve job the heads. We reshaped combustion chambers. We did a little port work. Did not get carried away on the openings because they're already larger than the carburetors or the manifolds we're using. So we'll have to match our manifolds to these cylinder heads. <clears throat> They already have a larger port cast in from the factory 
are from CV performance, these have a larger intake port volume than a factory cylinder head. We have a larger intake valve and a larger exhaust valve, so that's going to promote better scavenging, better exhaust, more horsepower, more area here. The more fuel you get in, the more air the motor can take in. And when we're working on a motor, it doesn't matter if it's a Volkswagen or a Chevrolet, they're just a basic air pump. And the more air and fuel you can pass through the motor and burn, the more horsepower you can make. So what we're gonna do is assemble the heads now. I'm gonna take the valve. These have already been lapped in, of course. Turn the head over. And I start by putting all the valves in the cylinder head. They're all laid out in order. After you lap the valves in and establish a seat, you want to make sure that you uh, number the valves and keep them all in order. There's no numbers on the heads because I've washed those, but I laid everything out prior to doing this video. So I lay everything out where like if I'm assembling the head like so, everything's laid out like so. So let's go ahead and put the valves in. I'm gonna put a little oil on the stem. Okay, and it should slide in like that. No fuss, no muss. Keep everything nice and clean. Next is our intake valve. Again, just a little bit of oil. Make sure the stem's completely covered with oil. I'm not a big proponent of uh, assembly lube of any kind in building motors. A lot of times, I think that's a marketing gimmick for people that are novice and building motors at home. But you never want to lather a bunch of grease onto a rod bearing, a main bearing, or any kind of bearing. You're always dealing with a clearance of three thousandths or less uh, between the uh, three ten thousandths of an inch between the bearing and the crank. And if you take that space up with a assembly lube, sometimes it can be hard for the uh, oil to get in there. And you know, it's the same old thing over and over. And it's, uh, some guys will say it's personal preference, but if you uh, look at some of the more established engine builders, maybe not in the Volkswagen world, but in like the, uh, you know, just the engine building world in general, they will not use assembly lube. I was taught at an early age not to use it, probably because of the expense, you know, that's what I always thought. But as I uh, got into different fields, building motors with different people. It's uh, not something that's used. Motor oil is your friend. It's what the bearing or whatever your part you're putting in is gonna have to depend on for the rest of its life. So, a lot of guys are like, yeah, but it's for break-in and it's for that initial start. Well, if you prime the motor and you have proper oil pressure, you're good to go. Uh, it's not like you can crawl in the motor every morning and lather everything down with assembly lube for startup purposes. So that's not a good excuse. Anyway, I'm going to get into a rant on that stuff. We're repeating the process on the stems here. I don't get too carried away. It's a nice thin coat. I get all my valves stuck in the head, make sure we don't have any problems. They should just float down like that. These are brand new guides, so everything's nice and tight. Uh, you want to check your guides and make sure you know you don't have excessive wear or the valve's not moving around because that makes it hard for the uh, seat to maintain a valve job. It will run, but it's not going to run optimum. There is a lot of power in lapping those valves in and establishing a seat and making sure everything is right when you fire the motor up on these cylinder heads. These things are mass produced, they're stacked in big piles, so there's all kinds of error, you know, when we're dealing with this stuff. This is a typical valve spring compressor. They make many different types. This is uh, one that I've been using for quite a while. Uh, they're not very expensive. You can buy one of these. And if you got a Volkswagen, I mean, some of these basic tools are a good thing to have. We've talked before about up and down on the springs. This is an aftermarket single spring. So it's pretty much symmetrical. I know that these are the bottoms. 
You can see where the spring's a little shined up from riding in the cup in the head. The head is recessed down there where the spring sits, and that's what that witness mark is from. You always want to be vigilant when you look at your valve springs. Look at the bottoms of the coils. So you want to check these areas, especially on the lower springs. A lot of times if you have coil bind occurring or the springs getting really out of shape, they'll start touching the coils. And that's a good indication that you're having valve float or coil bind. You want to have about 80 between these two bottom coils at full lift. Thousands. When they talk about, you know, coil bind on the spring, you don't want the springs touching together at full lift. So we're just going to compress it like so. I tilt it back a little bit. Hope all those don't fall out. Get our uh, keepers. They are sort of a cone shape. And the smaller portion faces down, the larger portion faces up. I put a little grease up here on the Volkswagen stuff, but these are pretty big grooves. And they're a little easier to deal with. I say that and that one just didn't uh, <laughs> go in the retainer. There we go, we're good to go now. So we're gonna move to our intake next again. We're looking at the spring, establishing up and down in the shiny spot down there where we're sitting in the head. You always want to try to put them on the same uh, way they were operating if you're going to use the same spring over. And a lot of guys don't like the single springs, but I am, uh, I, I would like to take all the valve spring pressure I can out of the motor because I think a lot of guys run way too much. Just personal personal feelings. I mean, I run uh, 20 pounds of boost on my car and it has 612 lift on the cam. And uh, I want to say I run about 80 on the seat and about 240 over the nose. You know, it's not a lot of spring pressure. And I've never had any kind of cam issue or valve float or any kind of valve problems. And that motor will turn 9,600, 10,000 RPM. I don't turn it that hard anymore since I turbocharged it, but in the past, it's been wound up. All right, so we're moving right along here. This isn't that hard. Most of the stuff I show you guys is, you know, common sense goes a long way with any kind of automotive repair. If it doesn't look right to you or sound right to you, more than likely, it's probably not right. You know, it's like anything else. You want shit to be symmetrical, clean, and in order, and especially with the motor. All right, so this is going to be it for this head. And we'll move on to the next one. Okay. So there we go. This head is assembled. We'll set this one off to the side. We'll move on to the next one. Again, it's clean. It's been lapped in. You want to make sure everything's clean. This is the final assembly process. So these will go over on the rack over there. And the next time we uh, grab these, it'll be when we're bolting them on. We decided not to upgrade this to a double spring, which I'm perfectly okay with. It will be more than appropriate for the RPM band that we're using. 
and uh, I'm going to keep the cam on the small side. I would like to put a stock cam in it, but I'm not going to do that because this isn't my motor. And uh, we'll do that at a later later video. We'll take a we'll build this motor. We're going to build a big motor and put a stock cam in it and see how it works for you know a torquey street motor. Because a lot of guys don't want to get it all involved with the uh, double valve springs and all the hassle that comes with it. You know, the cam wiping out because of the extra spring pressure and all that stuff that you don't need in an everyday driver. So, my neighbor's got a new dog. I apologize. So, again, we're going to orientate the spring the way it came out of the motor. That dog barked all night long. I thought it was my neighbor's dog on the other side. the bark anyway I pop this video out this morning get these heads back together and uh, we should be assembling this thing pretty quick here we have all the pieces that we need now and uh, I'm gonna get the transmission done this weekend so the car will be square, and we can uh, get everything bolted in, and uh, we'll go from there. I am not going to let it go without any miles on it, like the last guy. I don't know if he realized if he was going to jump in it and drive it to Florida. But uh, we will definitely put some miles on the car and break the motor in do another valve adjustment before it leaves and make sure it's 100 percent ready for the road trip all right so there we go before I bolt these on the car, I don't have my hammer on the bench, so I'll take a rubber hammer and tap each spring and make sure everything's seated. All the locks are where they want to be. But other than that, these are ready to go. That's how I assemble the cylinder heads. Motor oil. I hope that helped uh, some of you guys out there. Also very important is lapping the valves in. Some of you guys, this isn't a valve job, but you know, if you don't have access to a valve job, this is your next best friend. You want to make sure your motor's sealed up. The, the cylinder heads play a huge part in the way the motor performs and runs. So, this is my favorite part of the engine, uh, the cylinder head. Because uh, that's where all the power is at, and that's what makes the car drivable and all that good stuff. It all starts right here. So. Alright guys, I'm going to go ahead and shut this off. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And we'll see you on the next one.